Hello. How are you guys doing? <laughs> I had to like reauthenticate my uh, Twitch. So I was like, eek, I'm going to be late. Um, I'm just getting everything settled here, making sure. You know, it's like when I have too much time to prep, then I get a little, I, get, I become late. <gasps> Olivia, welcome back. How's it going? <laughs> Happy summer, guys. Man, summer is full throttle here. It's hot. Um, let me um, fix this here. Cool. All right, we are working on these. Hi, Mel. I check both. So I have a, a window that shows um, Twitch comments for both. So, yeah, Olivia's on Twitch and you're on YouTube. So it does look like I'm um, talking to imaginary people sometimes. I've had people come into Twitch and say, is this live? Because I guess I'm only talking to people on YouTube. <laughs> you're tired from vacation. I, you need a vacation from your vacation, exactly. I know what you mean. Every time I travel, I'm like, okay, I need to build in a few days of recovery. So. <laughs> Anywho. <clears throat> I think these are going to be really fun so because of all the binding because you know I love binding. Welcome Elaine, I'm glad you can be here too. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's a little crazy. But there's not a lot of folks that tune in on Twitch. It's a smaller crowd. Hi Siobhan. Fingers crossed is the baby napping. Hi Terry. How's it going? What would you guys do this weekend? You guys do anything? Was it Father's Day this weekend? Yeah, it was, right? Yeah, I made a brunch and it ended up turning out actually really good. Not that I'm like discounting my abilities, it's just, you know, it's like everything kind of worked out, you know, and it was simple, so, you know. And now my husband's traveling, so. Yes, right, it is an awesome fabric. But, um, these are for my daughter, and she just said, pick out something orange, yellow, and bright. So, you did a pair of Tanya culottes. I think I've seen those, Mel. That's awesome, how they turn out. Hola, Leia. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> Let's say hi to you guys first before we dig in. Let everyone get here. This is gonna be kind of a fast cut. And lately, I feel like my streams are either really long or really short, so you just never know, you know. So, <laughs> I'm not trying to make them one way or the other, trust me. But usually we would have cut yesterday or Tuesday and then sewed today, today and Saturday. And um, they went out fabulously, that's awesome. Your Tanya culottes. Cool. <laughs> um, and I swear, like, I'm trying to occasionally take Mondays off because I work Saturdays here. And it's hard for me to do that and, and, and also really easy for me to do that. But then on Tuesdays, I think it's Monday. And Wednesday, I think it's Tuesday. And then the week kind of gets away from me. So I'm trying to get used to that. You know, I feel like I'm back in my 20s working a weekend. But honestly, I, I, I really like it, you know. So I don't do a whole lot else besides work and be at home. So it's, it's not bad. And um, I don't really have schedules for much else. So it works, you know? It's just funny that it throws me off. All of a sudden, sometimes on Wednesdays, I'm like, oh my gosh, is it Thursday? Am I supposed to be streaming today? <laughs> or on Thursdays, I'm like, I'll just kind of saunter around the house in the morning, like, oh shoot, I have to get to work. It's Thursday, not Friday. So I, it's totally throwing me off. It's so weird how it's just like ingrained. It's that circadian thing, I think. And now we're not, like today now feels like Wednesday, even though it should feel like Friday because we're cutting. So it's so confusing. <laughs> so let's see, let's talk about this pattern though. It's a free pattern on the Pearl Soho website. Um, I think Julia suggested it last week and so we looked it up together and um, it's free. If you search the City Gym Shorts on their website, in there in their patterns you should you should find it pretty easily your gingers are done and you've worn them and they're great i'm so excited to hear that oh and you started on the wixton shift dress i keep looking at that one Mullen, but i never get a good view of the back of that dress so it makes me nervous that i'll i'll have a pillowcase back 
because that's how things like that fit me, you know? I mean, I, I've seen it with the belt, and the belt's really cute, but without the belt, like, it's really cute from the front, but I haven't seen it from the back, so I'm kind of, I'm, like, suspicious. <laughs> so that'll be awesome, Malin. I can't wait to see that. Um, all right, so if you look for these shorts on there, there are two pairs that they've listed, and one pair is a lined pair because she made a pair of, out of felted wool, of all things. And the other pair has like Liberty of London fabric, a floral on the front, and then a um, solid chambray on the back. And that's the, we're following those. I couldn't find the pattern in that version, the, like the first dozen times I went and looked for it. And it's a tiny little word linked. So it's the last bulleted item in the materials list under each size range. So if you look under the women's, it's the last bulleted thing and you need a template of this, find it right here in it's tiny little bulleted thing. So you made the Adrian Top and Friday pattern company. That's the one with the, the blousey leaves, right, Leah? Yeah, right, Mullen, yeah, that's smart. Oh, right, I know, Mel, I know. It's so funny because, um, I I actually struggled with that at first too because I, I didn't want them to be stiff, you know? So I, you know, I, I know usually you do see these shorts out of like a synthetic and that wouldn't be hard to find. You can find it on, on somewhere like Seattle Fabrics or the Rain Shed. So my final thoughts, yes. Thank you, for, Elaine, for asking that. So Elaine asked what my final thoughts, thoughts are on the free range slacks because today is the last day of her sale. They're tw the pattern's 20% off. And I love them. I'm, I'm actually going to cut two pairs today and sew them this afternoon because I really like them. I wore, I didn't, after I took those pictures, I didn't take them off for the rest of the day even though it was 95 degrees outside. And then, um... The next day I warmed on Father's Day. I really like it. <laughs> Hi, Brittany. Is it, wait, it's Brittany. Hi, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. So cool. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You're printing the pattern now. That's awesome. Oh, gosh, that's awesome. I'm really glad you guys like those pants. Hi, Heather. Nice. I, we're making the City Gym shorts by Pearl Soho. They're a free pattern. And here's a couple of pictures. I realized my picture that I put on my thumbnail, which is their picture, isn't, is, wasn't like very illustrative of what they look like. But I like that they're not very short. They look really short in the picture. And I really wanted you guys to see. I think this is a kid. But if you look the um, right melon, I'm me too. Um, if you look at the hashtag, my, they don't look too short. That's what I was worried about. Really, because I don't like my shorts to get hung up above my thigh. <laughs> Is that too much information? But um, they look a little slim fitting. So I'm just going to cut the largest size for myself. I think they'll be a little bit too big because um, of the fabric I picked. is isn't very drapey. Um, this fabric for my daughter's is a rayon, so it's very drapey. And I washed everything like super hot and um, dried it super hot because I really wanted to get as much shrinkage as possible out of there. I meant to try on those free range slacks after washing them again just to see because I feel like my fabric is shrinking twice, a lot the first time and a little the second time. So, yeah. Yeah, right, Elaine? I know, I really like them. And I think it's like, um, this is also too much information, but, um, you know, it's like I wear a lot of dresses and sometimes, even though, like, I find them more comfortable, I just find them just, I just find them a lot more comfortable. But, you know, my thighs do rub, you know, and I don't, I'm not a very big gal. So, even though I wear, like, I use Mega Babe, you know, so, like, it doesn't, it's not as uncomfortable. At the end of the day, man, I just want cloth there. <laughs> so, that's why I left those pants on. They are really comfortable. They didn't feel frumpy and they didn't feel like they stayed there. I think that wide elastic waistband is really key. So don't, don't, um, don't skimp out on that and don't forget to find it because my fabric store doesn't have it. Uh, maybe Joann's does. I haven't been there. So just so you guys know, find the one and a half inch elastic. And I would recommend just one piece, not the two that I did. It worked but it's not as ideal. So, oh, the quadra jeans are a hit for Father's Day. That's so awesome. I'm really glad to hear that, Heather. I'll bet he was really impressed. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, wash fabric two times, Louise. Exactly. Yeah. I hate that they're everywhere. No, me too. Thyrobe, yeah. I know, I know. And it's and it's funny because like the Mega Babe and there's all kinds of things you can get, you know. I like the Mega Babe stuff because it it's not made by a company that makes other things that kind of embarrass me at checkout. <laughs> so, because there's another brand out there and I'm like, it's, it's anti-chafing thing, you know. So... Yeah, right, Malin? I'm wearing, um, what I do sometimes is I get leggings and I just cut them off or I make, I buy like sports shorts. I have a pair on right now because I'm just kind of over it lately. It's so hot and it's muggy here and it's not a usually a humid place. So we're not really set up for it. So these are important things, you know? Oh, women's boxer wear. Yeah, see, I always worry that those are going to ride up though, you know? They carry... At you answer, they care. Is it? Are you? Did you mean to write the elastic, the white elastic? That's good to know. I don't like going there. I really appreciate that they're there, but um, I just, just uh, you know, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> and my local fabric store, um, I don't expect them to carry one and a half inch white elastic. They're set up for quilters, and they do a fantastic job of having a lot of stuff for garment sewers but um, they can't have everything you know they'd have to have like a whole nother store so they still they still really full like the fabric selection is pretty good so that's really the more important thing for me yeah they have the non roll yeah 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 I, I, I prefer braided elastic so I, I'm not an expert on elastic I will tell you guys right now I'm not an expert but I have learned what I don't like and I think we all know what we don't like and um, I don't like the non-roll elastic, you know, those deep grooves in it. I, that stuff's really thick, and I feel like it it starts squeaking. <laughs> yeah, you can make, you can buy a lot. Of, yeah, I think I'm gonna check Hearts Fabric and see if they're selling some too, because they are set up for garment sewers, so they might have it. One and a half inch wide elastic is pretty specific, you know. Hi, Rachel, how's it going? Yeah, I know. There's a lot of chat already. We haven't even started cutting. I'm just taking it easy because it's going to be a quick cut. I'm cutting two pairs just because it's such a quick quick project. I think these only take one inch. Um, I have one inch, but I think I'm going to use the three quarter because um, it's braided. I like the braided. It just stays stretchy for forever. I've never had it fail, and I used it on Chicken Boots projects, not even covered, like totally exposed for years and never had an issue with it. If you nick it, yeah, you're going to have an issue or something happens to it. And maybe you won't know if something happens to it, but um, really, I, I like the braided elastic. It's smoother. It's, its return is really good. It's strong. I like it a lot. And you know what's interesting is like I found a little like you know how at Joanne Fabrics they have little pamphlets sometimes hanging in front of um, certain things to kind of educate you. I found an elastic one on there, and I, I it, it actually was really educational, and I've kept it. I don't quite agree with a couple things on it, but I don't. It's not to say it's they're not true. It's just what I've discovered. So when you do, oh, so wait, Megan, that's a pattern that you're talking about. The um, oh, women's boxer wear by Stitch Upon a Time. That's a pattern. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah, right, Louise? Totally. This is um, so no camel toe. Another thing to consider. We women have a lot to consider here. <laughs> so my daughter is actually not in the kids' sizes. I mean, she's 16 and a half, but she's she's very petite. Like, I, I not, not petite in the height way, which is the classic uh, definition of petite. Um, she's a very slender gal. I'm just gonna warn you. So that's why I'm making them from me too, because I feel like I want to show you what they look like on a real body. Um, not that hers isn't real. I just that that was actually a really insensitive thing for me to say, but I do feel like um, skinny girls have issues too. You know, like they have their struggles and they get a lot of flack for being thin. And uh, my daughter's just naturally like that. She takes after her dad. She's kind of curvy too, but. Um, you know, like, she can't find clothes to fit her at all, ever. You know, the extra small or the extra extra small sometimes doesn't even fit her. She's just, she's like taller than me and, and like 100 pounds. So it's a struggle for her. My sister had the same issue in high school. 
people would ask her if she was anorexic. It was awful. She's just naturally slight, you know? Yeah, see, Megan, I used to wear boxers all the time in my 20s. Yeah, yeah, right now I'm just wearing, like, um, like champion <laughs> leggings from Target, I think. I got them at, at, like, last second when I was going to Harry Potter World in Florida with my friend Kirby. <laughs> and um, I was like, oh, I have a couple dresses planned, and you know what? Um, the Mega Babe is, is like, I can't expect Mega Babe to combat the Florida thing for all day, you know, and all the walking and everything. I didn't want to reply it because it works really, really good. And so I just brought shorts. Plus, you know, I didn't know what the rides were like, so I thought, oh, this will be a little more secure. All right. Yeah, I really, I really like it, Heather, the Mega Babe. Yeah. They, I use their boob dust powder. I really like that, and I and I like their the thigh chafing thing. And I, I got the set, so I have a, like a small one for work and a and larger one at home. It's great. It's really different than the the one that Monostat makes is really different, and I really like that one. I just hate buying it. I know, so. Yeah, heat and walking, not good, especially because of the humidity. We went in January, and it was 85, 88 degrees the whole time we were there. Um, and we were walking around outside, and it was humid. <laughs> so for her, she's from Oregon. It was tough. Yeah. They just came out with, uh, they have some deodorants, too, there. And they make a men's version of the Mega Babe. I can't believe, I can't remember what it's called, but it's a pretty cute name. So, and her Instagram's pretty funny. Well, I don't know. Yeah, right, Other, I know, I really like that stuff. It's, it's fun. Hi, Carol, how's it going? This chat always gets just right into the nitty gritty. <laughs> All right, let's cut. Let's, that's what you're here for. It's just like, like, um, like sweat, Brittany, yeah. Yeah, like it'll I'll get really sweaty under there if I'm like sitting or something. <laughs> yep. Yeah, cuz if I'm just sitting there, it's hot here. Yeah. <laughs> There's no fabric there, you know. It's usually just at night, you know, when I'm just hanging out. <laughs> this is this is too much for me right now. <laughs> All right, so we're making the um City Gem shorts. I'm following the directions for the pair that look like the Liberty of London pair on their website. Um, it's a free pattern. It's like eight pages to tape together, four for each, the front and the back. You do have to make a waistband pattern, so don't forget to make that. Yeah, Brittany, yeah, it's awesome. It works really good, I love it. And the dispenser is awesome, just so you guys know. Like I was like, oh, how is this gonna be messy? But you actually, it's like a pump. Just don't look at it and breathe it in, you're fine. You know, common sense. Oh, you know how I told you guys about those little Moo cards I have? This is them. I have, I keep forgetting I have them. That's why I have so many left. So you can buy a, a, these little half size business cards. I didn't design any of these really cute prints. They're really cute though. Um, I just use, they, they have like thousands of designs you can put on your cards. And, um, I, you, you can put as many as you want. I kind of repeated it. And then on the back, I just wrote, made especially for you from me, Love Sarah Me. And then I put a hole punch and then I tie it on whatever I make the person. I, I, you, know, I cause you know, when I used to hand knit things and stuff like that. And um, then I can write the care instructions on it. So um, I think I got these for free because I had ordered from them and they were like, hey, you can have a free thing. And so I got them for free, but they're pretty affordable. So. I just thought I'd mention that. They're not they're not like fabric labels, but they're they're a nice easy way to say, hey, by the way, this is handmade, doofus. Please take care of it, and this is how you do it. Right? <laughs> okay, so um like I said, you need a waistband pattern piece. And you need a waistband pattern piece. And the yardage on the um, that pattern, the the pattern that we're making in particular, the yardage is 
is listed as if you were doing the front as one fabric and the back as another fabric. I'm using solid for both of mine just to try it out. And you can get like, you could do the front on a half yard and the back with for a half yard. So you just need like a yard of fabric, but your waistband isn't gonna fit. Like the, hers will, like this is hers right here. Hers is gonna fit going this way and it would fit going this way because it's really wide fabric. I'm pretty sure it's not gonna fit on mine, but I'm not sure. They're out of Rhode Island, I thought they were British. Yes, exactly, Heather. I just did that. It's Moo. Moo produces the cards, Terry. <laughs> yeah. I, there's maybe other companies that do it. I'm not advertising for them. I have a hair in my eyes. I can feel it. Um, I just had mentioned them the other day because I got those business cards. And then I put like on the back of all my business cards an image of a lot of my streams so that I can hand them out. It turned out really good. Forgot my phone number because I didn't. It looked cluttered, and I was like, "Ah, who needs my phone number?" Now I've been writing it on there. So, um, so this is I'm making the 34 inch hip for my daughter. Her hip is 33, and then I'm gonna make the largest size for me. So she's gonna be the smallest size. I'm gonna be the largest size of this pattern, and I I measure for the the second down from the largest size, the 40. <clears throat> what is it 44 46 that looks like two and a half like 44 and a half inch I, my hip is like 41 so I know I'm going a little big but I kind of want um fullness but yeah that poofy be belly thing to I'm gonna tell you the truth you guys these are not kinds of shorts I would wear I like something more tailored and smooth rather than draw like elastic but like I think was a Louise that said maybe some PJ shorts that would work and I've done the lakeside pajamas um, as well and they work really well they are really short rise just so you know like they're really low rise um, these aren't these don't look super low rise but they're not super high either it's hard to tell there's not finished measurements listed so all right so let's um let's look and see I'm gonna look at the because I know about the, I looked ahead and I looked at the um, waistband thing. I'm going to look and see if I have room. Yeah, I have plenty of room on this fabric because I'm actually cutting the smallest size. <laughs> so it can, it can go way over there. So, and I just need one of these. So I traced it off for myself. And this fabric is the... Let's look at it here. It's Aura. Oh, by Mr. Domestic. I think it's Art Gallery. You can see that. I'm trying to be better about telling you guys about the fabric. So it's Aura by Mr. Domestic. Rayon, Aloha Spirit Bonfire. Angles, A division of art gallery. There you go. <laughs> there, when um, when Moo first, when I first discovered Moo, I shouldn't say when they first came out. I've been a customer of theirs for a long time. I remember them having this service where you could get a their order delivered by a dog, <laughs> a bulldog, <laughs> and that. But it was only in London. That's why I just assumed that that's where they were out of. There's no grain line listed on the waistband because you have to make the pattern piece. I'm gonna go the length grain. Why am I going the length grain? The pattern actually might be cuter going the other way. Let's see what I'm gonna get. Yeah, actually, I'm gonna do this way. I'm kind, of, I'm kind of eager to see what it'll look like. I think Cricut uh, liked the fabric. So, and then the binding I got is a uh, batik. So <clears throat> she tends to like bohemian style stuff. And, and I love that her favorite color is orange because <clears throat> that used to be my favorite color. And I never think of, I was just gonna make her black shorts. You know, go safe. Apparently that wouldn't have been safe for her. 
You gotta love a new mat and a new blade. So awesome. Okay, so here's the waistband for hers. So I could, you know, make it so it's like that on her waistband or like that. So we'll just see how it looks when we get there. I'm gonna need this pattern piece for me. I'm gonna set it aside here. The great thing about this is that um, you don't need much fabric. If you are okay with color blocking, which I, I like color blocking, um, you, I mean, you have a half yard of two different fabrics, you're kind of there. You can piece together the waistband. You could even probably in some sizes do a fat quarter for each one. <laughs> and then you could have a, a different, two different fronts, two different backs. That could be kind of fun. This seems like a really fun pattern to do things like that with. I'm gonna bias this towards this edge here and I'm cutting the smallest size. So I'm gonna hang it off a little bit. Just like that. I'm not gonna do any adjustments to the sizing for her I bias this towards the selvage because that way I leave <clears throat> the most fabric usable there because it's on the fold. Not that I'm planning anything with this, but um, it just gives me more options later for scraps. <laughs> Those are the back, they look small. No notches. There's no grain line, but definitely use this uh, tape together line as a grain line. You you want your grain line with pants it, um, perpendicular to the hem. Oh my gosh, I didn't even know what you guys were talking. <laughs> Mother daughter shorts, right? Hi Nancy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I need more shorts patterns, Christy. Hi Christy. Yeah, right, Olivia? I think you can have a lot of fun with the fabrics. This is rayon. Yeah, this pair is rayon. My pair is a, a lawn, cotton lawn. Yeah. And it even says rayon on the, the selvage. All right, so. Um. So if she likes these, I would totally make her some. And I'm going to ask my sister if I can make her kids some. Because the little kid ones look so cute. And you could have a lot of fun with the fabrics, you know. I, it was hard for me to not just keep shopping yesterday. I was like, ooh, I wonder if Ian would like those or Ellie would like that. <laughs> and if you really want an accurate yardage amount, what I would do is... Check it out, print it out, tape it together. Then look at, like, get a piece of fabric you have yardage of, most likely in like a 44 inch wide, and then um, you can kind of lay out the pattern pieces and see how it works, you know? Hey, Crafty Dad, how's it going? <laughs> Hi, everyone, okay, I'm, I'm catching up, I'm catching up. Um, Louise, I'm not sure if they gave the amount of the ease in the thing. <laughs> yeah, I know, right, Olivia? I know, I kind of grew out of some mine too. <laughs> what do you mean be good, Christy? <laughs> All are welcome here. <laughs> He's the one that needs to be good. No, just teasing. Everyone's welcome here. I follow the men who sew hashtag on Instagram. It's actually one of my favorite hashtags that I follow because I really like seeing what other people make in general. And uh, a lot of the guys 
coincidentally, they all on that hashtag really make some interesting things. Like they're, it's very diverse, like what they're making. And I really like it. It's, it's really, totally recommend that hashtag. <laughs> yeah, a lot of guys sew too. It's funny because I've, I, a long time ago, I was around some folks that had a lot of trouble, like some gals that had trouble with, they couldn't believe guys sew. And I would say, God, you know, guys are really good with their hands though. And they use machines. I mean, it's that kind of a natural thing. And men sewed in factories before women did. It wasn't until like wars would strike that women would get those positions in um, factories, you know? So they would be sewing in the home, but maybe not in it, you know, out in the world so yeah you could add ruffles to this Megan they are bound hems so you know I'm sorry this pattern is not a men's pattern crafty dad but I am going to be doing a men's um some men's sewing in July because it's going to be my husband's birthday and I thought I'd make him a shirt or something so I don't know if that's the kind of sewing you do if you do clothing or not but I would really like to do some Mormon sewing. We've only done the Jutland pants here. That's awesome. Exactly, Crafty Dad. Right, Heather? Yeah, but you know, Heather, you never know why about that. <laughs> right? Could be because it's easier to get the job. I don't know. All right, so um, this is my pair. So, oh yeah, it's 43 or 46 inch hip. I'm gonna do the 46 inch hip. I want a little fullness, you know? So here's my fabric and um, in person, I swear it looks really cool. On the camera, it does some kind of crazy things. I'm sorry if it bugs your eyes. This one's only 44 inch wide. Oh, let me show you the fabric. I'm trying to be better about that. This is Wyndham and this is Aria by Kelly Ventura. It looks a little bit like close up like watercolor or um, batik humps. Okay, cool. We do all that too. I haven't done a whole lot of home deck to be honest, we, but I do um, have a big history in bag making. Right, well Carrie, you know, I am thinking about doing the Fairfield by Thread Theory. I haven't made him a um, shirt in a really long time and he really likes that. Yeah, I kind of want blue, I want blue shorts. I, I, you guys, I just keep buying blue fabric, it's kind of nuts. So here, this is a, I got a yard and a quarter. This is washed. <clears throat> um, and so you'll see the fabric usage here. I have about this much left, but I still need my waistband. And the waistband's kind of big. Because it's going to gather up. Not much on me, apparently. <laughs> so, uh, let's see if I... I can't even get it on the fold here. So, this is just what I want you guys to note. That um, you might want to uh, either consider the waistband when you're buying your fabric. Or understand that it's probably going to be pieced because they don't mention that. Right, Nancy? Jeans aren't that bad. You guys, I really need to figure out like what we're going to do for the 100th episode. That must be really soon. And the one-year anniversary. They're a little bit apart from each other. And Hearts is going to send us a couple more projects. And in July, we're going to do a 100 acts of sewing. Um, I'm going to do dress number two. So if any, any of you have been interested in that. Matching camshirts. Wait, I missed that. <laughs> it's too difficult. Oh no. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Matching. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. I can't. I can barely keep up with you guys, but I love this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, Megan. I know. I need to make T-shirts. I am gonna work on my T-shirt pattern. I think next week. So I think we're gonna do some drafting next week. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. Yay, love 100 acts of sewing. I know, I really like uh, Sonya Phillip. I like what she's done for sewing. All right, so I'm gonna piece my waistband. That's just all there is to it. All right, let's go, let's go cut these guys here. If I had spent a little more time at the fabric store, probably would have picked out 
some color blocking. I'm just looking at my grain line here, which I just used the um, the tape the tape tape together lines as my my grain lines because they were perpendicular to the the selvage. Not the selvage, perpendicular to the hem. Sorry, I'm trying to do two things at once. <laughs> I don't know why I put that on there. I don't want that out of my way, honestly. I like two weights usually. I don't know why I just put one there. You can see, like, your selvage ruffles up your fabric. Try not to use your selvage unless you're really desperate. Sometimes I cut it off so that the fabric will relax. I'm so excited about all the binding in this. I just love binding. Any chance I can get you guys to do binding. It's my ulterior motive. Oh, cool, Carol. It's kind of warm to sew. Maybe that's why. <laughs> Vintage Star Wars bedding. That's awesome. Yeah, right? I love making shirts. I love setting in sleeves. Like, hubba hubba, you know? No, I don't, Megan. I mean, I don't think I have enough of my what I picked for my binding to do a contrast waistband, but I think you're right. It would be really cute. Oh, gosh. This is just too far away. I don't want to get under the camera. That's why I'm having some trouble here. Alrighty, I'm going to I'm gonna set that aside. You never know. I can tell my back. I'm gonna clip it to hers. My mom was at my at the shop here today yesterday and um or yesterday she was here and uh, she was looking at the clover clips and didn't know they were for sewing. She was pretty into them. All right, for that one person that's gonna comment on my YouTube that they wish my blade was shut, I'm sorry. I'm about to use it again. Yeah, Carrie, you need a new blade. <laughs> I may have to like look back at the stream so I can see what you guys are all talking about here. So this was the smaller, the size down from this. I'm cutting up, cutting the largest size. There's a chance they could be too big for me, but I'm gonna cut the elastic to fit me. Uh, they have suggested elastic cut measurements, but um, I think you should always go by where they're gonna sit on you. I'm not quite sure where that's at yet because um, it's kinda hard to tell in the hashtag 100%. Oh, hi, Jill. How's it going? Welcome. Yeah, time difference is terrible for a lot of you. I'm sorry about that. You love the sound of that, Richard, but I, you know, if you uh, watch me long enough, I will go on and on about why I change my blade often, but mainly because it's safer, um, safer for your body for repetitive motion issues. And uh, why struggle, right? You know? Yeah, me too, Melinda. I find shirts and jeans so satisfying. I love top stitching, you know. I can't, now I can't see all the chat. I'm sorry, you guys. So I am, they send you blades every three months. Nancy, are they, are they the brand of your rotary cutter? 
because I've tried other brands and they're not as good. I, I use Ulfa. I don't have a, like, a, I've only ever used Ulfa. So it's not like, um, I, I don't know the other brands. I can't, I can't, I, I'm not like a spokesperson for them. I just like my, I've had these for a while, but I like their blades, you know? Yeah, that's true, Megan. Huh. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like it when I see you guys making dinner and you're watching. It's cute. And I think, oh, I do the same thing. I watch gaming streams while I'm making food or something. What am I doing? I'm getting distracted. I'm going to open up my fabric. And then I'm going to fold it this way to cut both my waistbands. So, you know, buying an inch and a uh, yard and a quarter of this, you know, it was a, it was a good call. Let's see what I'm going to have left because this is a uh, pre-washed. I can get both these right here, barely. So a yard and a quarter probably was a good call anyway. <clears throat> the last second I upped it from one yard to a yard and a quarter. Probably would have had to use a contrast waistband had I not. So, because this right here is not nine inches, I don't think. No, it's seven. So a yard and a quarter works for me. I'm doing the largest size, just so you know, of one solid color. I'm gonna add seam allowance to the other end. I also got a new mat recently, so it is helping the the niceness of the blade. The heck, there we go. And then when I say that, it doesn't really cut. Should I save this? Ooh, look at that, it's right there. I'm gonna save that just in case tomorrow I need it. You know, I, I just touched my blade to my weight, and I think that's why it's doing this now. <laughs> what machine is automatic? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, right. Craftsy. Oh, they merged. I thought they just changed their name to Blueprint. I don't really know. Cra Creative Bug is different. Oh, what machine do you guys have? What are you talking about? Oh, I know what you mean, Nancy. I That sewing mojo thing kind of comes and goes. And the rain, it definitely makes you feel that sad syndrome. I'm from Humboldt County. I know it really well. So it's cloudy there 300 days a year at least. So. Yeah, you probably should change your blade. If you're wondering if you should change your blade, you probably should. <laughs> I know, Heather, right? Yeah, I, told, I, I went like, I kind of did this. I whacked the back of it. That's enough. That's totally enough. They're cut. So let's do our binding. There's nothing like getting excited to sew, sitting down, and then you need your binding, right? So let's just cut it right now. I'm gonna cut my, what's going on here? This is my weird fabric scrap piece now. I looked for a half hour solid before the stream for my box of pattern hooks. I have hundreds of pattern hooks, and when I moved, I don't know what I did with them. I, they're not where they're supposed to be. That's, that's all I can figure. So this is the binding for Cricut's pair, and then this is the binding for mine, which is probably really crazy on stream, but I promise, I think it's going to be fine. See, when you just see a tiny bit, we need my binding, my bias binding window. See, I think it'll be pretty cute. Right? It'll work, right? Right? Hey, Lisa, how's it going? <laughs> I 
Okay. So I got a half yard for Cricket's pair. Uh, I didn't see this as a fat quarter. They'll cut me a fat quarter. Like the, most fabric stores, if you just want a fat quarter or something and they cater to quilters, I think um, you can ask them if you're just looking for a fat quarter to do that. But what I was going to do is measure, because I think for her pair she needs 48 inches of binding. So I'm just going to roughly look at this, like 48, if I can get four of my ruler, you know, I'm, I'm going to be fine. So I really could just cut up this fat quarter and I think I'm going to do that so I can save the other piece. Oh yeah, there's a nick in my blade. Well, let's see if this one's better. I think this one will be okay. All right, let's get rid of this here. I would just cut out both my layers together, my bindings, but then I have to pull them apart. <laughs> so this is how I, I fold up binding. I have a video on folding and cutting your binding, and I have a video on how to sew it. I fancy myself as quite good at sewing binding. I really love it, and I've done it for a really long time, but no one ever taught me. So I, I have my own little like tips and tricks for it. So, ooh, you printed your pattern today. Nice. Yeah, I think this will work, right, right, right? <laughs> I'm just looking at your guys' comments. <laughs> okay, so this is the selvage right here. This is was the fold. It's fat quarter. A fat quarter just means that um, instead of a quarter of a yard, which is nine inches, and it being the full width of the fabric all the way, what you do is you do half of a yard and then cut it on the fold. So the quarter is side by side, so to speak. So it's a fat quarter. So it's the same surface area, just a different configuration, maybe more usable for what you need it for. That's all. Um, and so then uh, this is how I do it. There's lots of ways to, to fold binding, do it the least confusing. <laughs> so I fold it with the length grain to the cross grain there, and then I fold it along this fold. Now this is a pretty small piece, so I don't need to do it more times, but you can just keep going if you have a really big piece like this. And in general, what I'll do is I'm gonna cut this fold off first, and I'm gonna line up my ruler so it's perpendicular to this fold here. This is kind of a small blade for this kind of a, a thickness. And then I flip it over because I'm right-handed. This is how I cut. Um, and I'm going to do mine at 1 and 3 eighths. Let's see what they say. Because I always cut my binding 1 and 3 eighths out of habit. But let's see what they recommend. Because you might want it the way they have it. You might not even need it as um, wide. They recommend a bias tape maker. I, don't, I have those, but I've never used them. I, they're just a little extra of a step I don't find that I need them, but they can be really helpful. People really love them if you like them. Oh, I may not even have the, oh yeah, here we go. One, they want one and five eighths. We could do that. I'm gonna try it. One and five eighths, wide binding. It's probably because the seam allowance is um, wider. I think I'm gonna do one and a half. I don't think I can do that. <laughs> So there we go, and I'm just going to keep going. I love see-through rulers because I can just line it up at that one and a half inch mark going this way along the ruler. There's a lot of really great quilting rulers out there, um, but they're not set up like this. It's a little different. They're a little thick too, but the thickness is really nice for safety. I think that'll give me enough. Voila. Oh, I'm glad I only need about uh, a fat quarter's worth because this is all I have of this fabric here. I'm gonna cut the selvage off. The selvage doesn't bug me on the batiks. Batiks are kind of a unique selvage. They've been through a lot of treatment before they came to you if they're a real batik. I bought this fabric a long time ago. I really love micro prints because of binding. 
You haven't seen this method, Lisa? This doesn't look like a fat quarter, does it? <laughs> Why are my glasses slipping again? <laughs> okay, so here we go. I'm just gonna fold it length grain to cross grain. Because remember, bias um, is the 45 degree angle length grain, the grain line. So the length grain, it runs parallel to the selvage. The cross grain is perpendicular to the selvage. And the bias grain line is 45 degrees to either. And anything that is not on the length or the cross grain is considered bias. So if you can't get perfect bias, like a perfect 45 degree angle, that's okay. Just get somewhere in there. You're gonna get stretched. And the reason that you want it on the bias is because, you know, here is the, this is the, this is the cross grain. <clears throat> so the cross grain's kind of stretchy. The length grain isn't as stretchy. The bias is very stretchy. And it um, allows for you to sew tight curves without a lot of wrinkling or torquing. It's very forgiving. It's amazing. All right, then I fold it along this, the fold that I created. I just keep it. Now I just stack the folds. That's the way I like to put it. Just stack these folds up. This one's been folded for a while. <clears throat> the reason I like to cut this off right here so the other thing you can do is sometimes what I do is I cut my bias down the middle here and then I stack these two pieces and then I use that as my cut line. I'm not cutting very much, so I just cut this off right here. You're not going to need that. And now I have my nice true edge to use for my bias. This blade feels kind of tiny. It's a little, it's a little small for this thickness, but it's uh, pretty sharp. It's that first, first little spot doesn't like it. What's uh, what's helped you up your sewing game? Oh, your machine. Yeah, it is polka dot. It's kind of crazy though, isn't it? On the camera, it's a little nicer in person. I love uh, when the print just kind of changes when it's on the bias. I'm gonna go get my little window and show you some the how I pick bias sometimes. I'll be right back. Okay, so I made this tip. Um, this I showed this tip because when um, I used to pick out fabric for uh, chicken boots, um, we, you know, our third fabric, we picked three fabrics out per group. There would be an outer fabric, a lining fabric, and a binding fabric. And when we would pick the binding fabric, it all kind of hinged. <laughs> if the binding fabric kind of pulled it together, framed it really nicely, offered some contrast or something like that. And um, it would be really tempting to pick out a print that may not work or something. So I, I figured out this little method of, I would make this little window. It took me a long time to figure out how to do this. And then me and Rayanne had little windows on scraps of paper. And we would go, like when the fabric rep was there, we would hold it up and see what the, the binding was going to look like. And then when we, we would pull the, you know, the fabric card of the fabrics we were picking up to it and we would kind of hold it up and go, okay, what's that going to look like, you know? And so, um, you know, this is the, the selvage right here. So that's the length grain. That's what the binding's going to look like. It can, it, what can happen, the reason this is really helpful for many reasons is it tunes out all of the, the, other fabric around it and you can just see that and you can also see what's going to happen because you're like oh my gosh look at this plaid we love plaid we were suckers for plaid so much so that it would sometimes get us into trouble when we pick fabrics out that didn't end up really working that well 
And look at this one. This is a good example. So if I put this on the length grain, it's not on the diagonal anymore because they printed it on the diagonal. That's really obvious when I'm telling you this right now, but when you're looking at, you know, a thousand fabrics and you're picking out the fabrics for the line, it can kind of get, a, you can kind of get just kind of hearts for eyes <laughs> and, and forget the bigger picture and um, be like, you're already, like for, especially for Ray Ann and I, we always saw things as bias and on the diagonal, like, cause we, we, we sewed a mile of it every year, you know? So doing this, we would go, oh, that's right. It's already on the diagonal. <laughs> we can't use that. This would be, you know, fine if maybe when the, we had it cut, because we had it professionally cut, it always lined up in the same spot, but it's not. You're, you're going to get a strip of bias that is here and a strip of bias that's here, and then they're going to sew together, and it's going to look interrupted as it goes along, right? And, um, you know, this is obviously not what we would cut it. This is what it finished. So if your bias finish is wider, you can make your window a little bigger. So this would be one and three eighths inch wide cut fabric that um, then, you know, once it's sewn, it would finish that. And then we could go, okay. Because another thing we would do also, obviously, is we would just fold up fabric like this and lay it on top and go, okay, how's that going to look, you know, like this? But sometimes in those swatch books that the rep brings you, there's a big piece of fabric for the main fabric like this, and then all the other little things are this big. <laughs> so it's really hard to like pull, you can't take them off or anything like that, you know? So um, yeah, the window's really great. You know, it's like, oh, I really like this fabric, but what's it gonna look like as bias? And sometimes you would, you would really find something magical. You'd be like, wow, that, I didn't know that fabric was going to do that. You know, like this fabric right here would be really interesting binding, you know. It would be like a subtle polka dot kind of happening occasionally, you know. And um, I also share this story where we had this fabric. Oh, I wish I had a piece of the actual fabric, but I don't think I do. But I'll show you the binding because I'll show you what a big mistake looks like. <laughs> Okay, so here's a few examples of like what can go wrong too, you know. Um, this one was our biggest fail. So when I bought fabric, I bought um, like when we were at, at the, towards the end, if it was going to be a really good group, we would buy about 125 yards of the outer fabric, 125 of the lining, and sometimes 125 yards to be made into binding. The ratio kind of worked out that way. Or maybe about 90. It was always about seven eighths of binding fabric, but sometimes the way they sell bolts and rolls is you have to buy it in certain increments. And so then when it would arrive, I'd pull off about a bolt's worth, five to 15 yards depended, and um, I would not cut that into binding, and then I would send the rest out to be made into binding. Well, if I didn't give instructions, they would just roll it out and cut it into the binding, um, and they were amazing. I loved working with this company. But if I gave them direction, they would tell them, they would do what I would tell them to do. Well, this fabric, I'll show you. It looks like, I need a piece of paper. Let's see. It looked like, um, so here's the fabric. Here's the roll of fabric. It was made up of dots that were kind of in a diagonal line. It's a cotton and steel print. So they kind of did this, right? Now, um, hi Princess Wade, how's it going? So when I sent out this fabric to made into binding, I forgot to tell them that I wanted them to cut it perpendicular to the dots, right? So then it would have been gold dots, gold dots, gold dots, gold dots, but no, look at what I got. So there are long stretches sometimes in my binding where there's nothing. So if this was made into binding, it would be just solid orange. <laughs> So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, I had 90 yards of fabric cut into this binding. Could have been really great. 
<laughs> but then um, I, since that I came back, I was like, oops, okay, we don't like that. Um, now what? I sold off these rolls of binding, you know, to people. Uh, it took me a few years. I didn't really push it. And um, I had to pick out a whole new binding, make sure it was available, get it shipped to me, send it to the binding cutter and have it cut again. So the other weird things that you can come across are, like look at these arrows. You know, these arrows ended up on the diagonal and these arrows ended up, they were on diagonal on the fabric so they went along the, um, I told them, I want you to cut this binding so that the arrows are along the bias. Otherwise they would have been like this. So there's a lot of things to think about when you're buying your binding. And when quilters plan their quilts, they're definitely taking these things into consideration. You know, here's another one. This, these squares are on the bias on the fabric. So when I cut them, they do this. This binding ended up being amazing. I, it was a success. I liked it. I knew it was going to do that. I really liked the way it framed the fabric. It's kind of a crazy a print on the camera, but, um, so they, these were printed, you know, on the bias, the, it's printed on the bias, but when it's on the cut on the bias, it straightens it out. So there's a lot of things to think about when you're buying your binding. But if you make that little window, it really helps. And just make sure you put your length grain on there, you know, because sometimes when you look at it like this, let's look at it like this. This is another thing I show. So now when you can't see the fabric, I'll show you something funny that happens. Hopefully this fabric shows it well. Eh, I really want to get rid of all the fabric. Let's see. And if you look at that Instagram post, that Instagram post, it's pinned in my on my profile thing. People challenged me on it. They were like, "How is that the same?" So I posted the picture like this, and then I posted the picture um, like this. I think, right? I posted the picture like this and the picture like this, and they just couldn't understand that I hadn't rotated this part. All I'd done was rotated the fabric. You know, it can look really different. So, all right. That was a lot of talk about binding, sorry. <laughs> it's a really, it's a really great tool. It's underrated, I feel like. More and more people are using it. I'm seeing it in binding um, and facings and stuff on clothing. And that can be tricky, so. Um, Christy, if you go to the, um, the pattern, the, I think they're free patterns. So look in there across the top on the tabs. It says free patterns. Click, click that and, or their blog. Do you want to, let's go there together. Here, I'll show you. No, you don't want to see my machine. All right. You know I like writing, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay, so you could actually, um, if you Google City Gym Shorts by Pearl Soho, you'll get there, but let's just go to their site and navigate it together. Oops, this, these typewriters are so, or the keyboards are so small now. So this comes up as free patterns, but let's just go to their home and see Patterns, no. Let's see, create. This actually didn't go this way either. Oh, there's a free patterns tab right here. You see that? Let's do that. I put it on sewing and then you put in a uh, city gym shorts. You should get two pairs. This is a lined pair made out of uh, felted wool. Um, and this is the pair that I'm doing. And then I'm going to show you where to click. So if you go down, this is like a blog post, go down here, go down here, go way down. So now here we are. This is the material section right here. The pattern is right here. See that last, line 
of the bulleted list. <laughs> um, yeah, and the search box works really well. Oh yeah, you want my Juki? You can't have it. <laughs> I it's an industrial machine. It's not the the home style, which I really want to try out. So I didn't print out all the pages, but all there's uh, sewing instructions here. Um, there's the bias tape maker I was telling you about. People love that, and then you're gonna bind. Yeah, so here you go. You don't need me. <laughs> So yeah, here's the um, Liberty of London pair. And then the other pair is a felted wool pair. I like that they're kind of long though. Yeah, does that help? And on this one, on the felted wool pair, it's right here. It actually says, it's under women and it says women's city gym shorts template. I kept looking for that on the other pair. So that's um, why I was uh, missing it before. So that help. You have a home juke and you love it. That's cool. Pattern table, here we go. Yeah, uh, my local fabric store started carrying them. I'd really like to try it out. Um, I have a Bernina 140 is what my home machine is that I use for buttonholes. And then my serger is a Baby Lock um, Evolve. Is that the, right? It's a, Baby Lock is the brand and Evolve is the um, style. So. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, and I, I am a big fan of the industrial, uh, it just sews like butter, just love it. That would make a nice Christmas gift. Christmas in July. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, we are ready to sew city gym shorts. And I think I know what Hearts is sending me. I think you're gonna really like what the patterns they're gonna send me to sew are gonna be. They're gonna really be fun. <laughs> I saw the home juki jukies there, 1600s. Oh, is that the price? Oh, that, does Joanne sell jukies? Wow, who'd have thought? Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say, that's almost as much as the juki industrial. Mine was, I think, $1,800, and I got the electronics. If you don't get the electronics, it's like a $800 machine. It's super affordable. That's why when people when people are pretty shocked I use an industrial, they act like um, it was really expensive, and I'm like, no, they're they're very they're very affordable. They're not portable. They're not portable. I totally get that. And a lot of people like portable machines, you know. So, um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, I I hecka like. That thing. I had a 5500. If you are interested in a used machine, go for a 5500. You could probably find one for $300 without electronics. You can buy one of mine. I have two for sale. I had something put up for sale yet. But they're they're great machines. Mine mine um, don't, don't have electronics, so they're not going to be $300, but they're still going to be great machines, you know. But if you are interested in industrial, you don't care about the electronics, Juki 5500 without electronics. Oh, wow. You must have a big Joann's. That's awesome. That is crazy. You're right. That, it's like, it makes me go, Juki, why? <laughs> Not terrible. <laughs> My bias is showing. Um, so here we go. This is. These are gonna be crickets. So let's let's see how they're gonna look. I like this little piece of binding. I'm glad I got a little extra. You know. That'll work, don't you think? Oh, 
Oh, what do I mean by have electronics? That's such a good question. I'm sorry I didn't explain that because um, I used to be like, what do you mean electronics? It's an electric machine. Um, and then I finally, I finally discerned the difference, obviously. So my machine, um, and I demonstrate this sometimes. If you just ask, I'll show you that on my machine. My machine has an automatic back tack if I enable it. Um, it also clips the thread. So it always stops with needle down as well. So they're very simple things, but they make um, my sewing faster and I have my hands available because they, I also have heel lift, not knee lift. And I got that because I was having some pretty serious issues with my um, hip region. And I think it's because of using a knee lift for 20 years. That's all I ever used. Um, because it's a very asymmetrical motion. So when I press back on my heels, my machine go uh, will like, uh, it'll back tack if I want it to. Okay, so if I've enabled the back tack, if I press back on my heels, when I stop, it'll back tack. So if I just go to sew, when I press forward, it'll back tack and then keep going. And then when I'm done, if I press back on my heels, it will back tack, back tack, clip the thread, lift up the presser foot, and I just pull it out. I don't use the back tack, just as a personal preference. I use a little, there's a little back tack button right here with my finger and I just go like this, it's really fast. Um, I do that because um, I don't back tack a lot and you'll hear me talk about that a lot. <laughs> so, um, and so what I like about mine is it has the thread snip in the, under, you know, under the throat plate and it stops needle down. That seems like a lot of extra money to spend for those features, but as a since I've been a production sewer for my own business for so long, they're, they're essential. And I've converted lots of other people that are small businesses, and I meet them at shows, and they're sewing, because I support them. I don't just snub the other bag makers around me. I go and I buy from them, and I talk with them. I love to know what they do. and if they make it all and stuff like that and um, I've converted two for sure to using industrials and they sent me like oh my gosh this was the game changer why didn't I do this before you know it's a change it's a big change you know it's hard to it's hard to uh, describe <laughs> I'm gonna need to go to um, Joanne's I don't think ours is under remodel though no princess wait it's just the foot pedal it's just my foot pedal so the foot pedal is just a standard foot pedal. looks the same on any machine. In fact, the, the, the table of an industrial machine can be any table pretty much. You, they just set the machine itself in there and then there's electronics that they put on the back of it. Um, and then they just hook it all up. So it's just pressure that's doing that. So it's just a big, it's a big foot pedal on an industrial machine. And what's great about that is you can control it with both feet. I know, Carol, I don't know why. I know that they can go really fast, but the thing is you have a lot more control. You guys see me use it. Yeah, the needle down function, if you, your machine might have it, you guys have home machines, it might have it. Mine has that function. If I press down on my, my uh, foot pedal on my home machine, it will sink the needle down. I just have to remember to do it. And it's really helpful because when you want to turn a corner and stuff, it doesn't turn corners as well as my industrial. Sometimes the thread will kind of get a little loopy, you know? There we go. Stop blinding you. <laughs> I um, just heard you transfer before the flea season hits. Why is that, Carol? <laughs> is, it get, is it get busy there or something? I, they, I feel like I've proven with the industrial that you can sew one stitch at a time and you can um, set your speed up on your industrial. In fact, it's very obvious because it shows a turtle or a rabbit and that's how you adjust it. <laughs> so, and you know, the automatic bobbin winding, you just put your bobbin there and as you sew. Yeah, I know the needle down setting is so great. It's so great because you can walk away. It takes over the whole store. Oh. Yeah, those rolls are big. Those rolls are really big. I know, my stiffener roll. I still have one roll of stiffener here. It's in the closet. I was looking at it today going, when am I ever going to use all this? <laughs> you can't buy anything during this season. <laughs> 
Uh, well, Crafty Dad, all my stream live streams are uploaded, so you can see on in some of the sewing. But um, if you would like a demo, I if you're here tomorrow, just ask. I'm happy to do that for you. I can put on all those features. Yeah, I mean, it's not like automatic, like, I have to put the bobbin on there, you know? Like Olivia on Twitch said, automatic bobbin winding would be pretty sweet. Um, so as, a, like, say my bobbin runs out, I just swap it with the one on the right on the bobbin winder. I just click it on there, do it. And then as I sew, it fills it up. So there's always one filling. And it, and it only takes a few minutes of sewing, and it's full. So, yeah, just pick one of the videos that says I'm sewing, and you'll see. I don't demo it, but you can see it in action. And you'll hear it, because you're going to hear it go thunk. <laughs> and someone, someone, someone asks every few weeks, what's that noise? And it's because my old industrial was a little gentler when the um, presser foot comes down, and it didn't get impatient because it, it, had diff a, it didn't have heel lift. So I had knee lift, and the knee lift was all that did it. The heel lift is just barely a touch, and the presser foot comes up and down. So if I take my work out of the machine and the presser foot's up, It'll get tired of waiting for me, and it will go thunk. In fact, I think um, if you put exclamation point noise, if you write exclamation point noise in the chat, it'll say that. <laughs> because when someone asks it, I'm hoping one of you guys will put that in there so it'll answer, what's that noise? A couple of them said now they like that noise. They find it comforting. <laughs> it's kind of funny. It's just because I'm not, I, I'm also like, I had a knee lift for decades and I sometimes get a little touchy with my uh, heel. I forget about it and it's always going thunk, 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 thunk. <laughs> so you'll hear it. You'll notice it. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Yeah, I do love my Juki. It's an 8700. I just love it. Basic, no zigzag, straight stitch, back, forward, backward. That's it. And then my other Juki has a um, binding attachment on it. I won't be te cheating and using that on these shorts, though. I will totally bind these by hand. I'm not hand sewing anything, just so you guys know. And um, the other one's just a straight up machine. They're identical. But you can get a binding attachment for $35, people. People are always like marveling over that. $35, <laughs> you can get a binding. You don't notice the noise anymore, Carol? I feel like you were one of the ones that asked when you were new here too. Yeah, yeah, you just don't notice it anymore. I notice it because I, I sewed on the other for so long and I, I kind of miss how quiet it was. It was so nice. Oh, so let's see if it works, Lisa. I feel like maybe those commands stopped working. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a few commands. You just got to be a regular. You'll, get, you'll see them all. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, um, I don't really want to bore you guys at this point. I'm going to cut out some um, two more pairs of free range pants and I'm going to sew them. I must, oh, should I sew them today? I actually do have other things I have to work on outside the stream right now. I have to get the patterns ready. So um, I'm trying to work on that right now. And um, I'm already sewing enough for myself here, aren't I? <laughs> well, I really appreciate you guys all coming. I know that a lot of you work during the day or it's a weird time for you. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome, Crafty Dad. Thanks for stopping in. Appreciate it. I'm live to, not, I'm not here tomorrow. Sorry, I keep thinking today's Wednesday and I'm here tomorrow. Saturday, 11 a.m. Pacific, I will be sewing up these shorts, okay? Saturday, 11 a.m. Pacific, which is June 22nd, right? Yeah. <laughs> She's probably 12, aw, that's awesome. Right, I know, right, right. Hasta sabado, iguanas. See you guys then. <laughs> See you, Mel. Thanks for stopping in. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, I really appreciate you guys. 
Go USA. <laughs> Saturday, yeah, Saturday. <laughs> Sorry. I re literally do stream usually three times a week, and I've been cutting Tuesday, Wednesday, sewing Thursday and Saturday. This week, we can sew both these on Saturday. It'll be no problem. So, All right, guys. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for stopping in. I really appreciate it. And um, if you're new here, subscribe to my channel. You click that little bell, and it actually will just tell you when I'm live so you don't have to worry about missing it. I usually post on the same day on Instagram, on, on Instagram with the same name, so so live. I stream live on Twitch and YouTube. And if you go to my website, so so dot live, you can see all the projects that we've made and they're grouped. It's really easy now. You can just kind of go to the project and there's a few brief notes on what I would do different, what fabric I used, what size I made, a pic few pictures of it in action, like on a real person and the links to the video so if you're looking for part two and you can't find it just go to the website and you'll find it there so yeah it's a really easy so all right louise no worries <laughs> all right you guys take care have a great rest of your week thanks so much you guys are the best so see you soon